Ephesians 4.25 says, Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. I wanted to talk to you today about the importance of truth. If you've seen my videos at all, you probably know that I'm very passionate about the truth. I think the Bible is very passionate about the truth. But it's not just that. I don't think that most people understand how lies have overtaken the world. And really, they've overtaken the church, which, be, which has become a part of the world. Uh, this is uh, a burden I feel greatly that we Christians need to bear. And that is representing the truth, telling the truth, not misleading, even accidentally. I mean, if we're amongst friends, I suppose we can kid around a little bit here and there. They will understand the difference. But when we're talking to people seriously, uh, they need to know the truth. And we have to get that message ac across. And we are definitely facing that here in Africa. Uh, my wife and I, um, I'm not, it's not to say that this isn't an issue all over the world, but I'm speaking right now to where we are at. It looks a little different from place to place, but really lies are just overtaking the world and they have overtaken the church. Most of the time you don't think you're telling a lie. And that's the way the devil wants it because uh, Christians would not try to lie. And, you know, for example, of course, today we would hear a lot of things about being politically correct. Well, let's say this in a politically correct way, you know, changing uh, things to like birthing person instead of a mother, uh, the way you address someone, how you can just change these words to be inoffensive. We're getting along with everybody. And that sounds good up front, but it really isn't. Because in the end, we start denying truth. And we start changing things to make them what, what we want them to be or what someone wants them to be. And if one person does it, you see, then they're forcing someone else to agree with a wrong point of view. Obviously, we have choice as far as, you know, will Jesus be our savior? Will we follow after him? I mean, God gives us a choice. It doesn't make the choice right. And we shouldn't have to concede to those that are following wrong ways just to get along with them. And that's the pressure we have. There are some areas that have laws about things called hate speech. Unfortunately, these, these laws are vague and they really are not good things. Uh, for example, I mean, I, I suppose things like hate speech uh, would be aimed at those who are like targeting groups, those who might be against a certain race, or, you know, of course, as uh, Hitler was against Jews in Germany, you know, back during the time of his, his reign of power, that would be hate speech talking against, you know, a whole group, you know, putting them down, whatever. But unfortunately, hate speech is pretty vague, and it could be almost anything offensive. And that's a problem, because how do we know what someone else is going to find offensive? Not only that, as Christians, then we have a challenge because we are to obey the Bible and not the laws of the land. That's the truth. That's Acts 5.29. We ought to obey God rather than men because the men wanted to silence Peter and John and the rest of the disciples. And so we must obey the Bible uh, where it is differing from the laws of the land. When I look at this, I just want to give, give a, a little example of what we're going through. Now, we've been in Africa for two years, and I would say, from my own view, and this isn't, this isn't the view that most people would take, I would say, there are just liars everywhere, and almost every person is a liar. Uh, it's not based upon the color of skin. This is kind of a cultural thing. It is not exactly the same in the U.S. I mean, so it certainly isn't black, white, or, or whatever race it is. It is the way people are raised. Here, what we are seeing is that the people generally are being, they are being brought up not to dispute with anyone. In other words, whatever you say, they will agree with. They will be nodding their heads. They will be saying yes, yes, etc., etc. To me, it's very frustrating because you can't get an honest opinion. They're always being taught to agree with you. And that isn't just, you know, black on white. That's just person on person. They will be taught to agree with you. 
And so I hope you can see this, that if you have a priority of getting along with people, if you're saying, this is what we're going to do, we're never going to get into fights, and, uh, you know, we just, we need to get along. And even if we're going to witness for Christ, how would we do that unless we are friends? The problem is, sooner or later, you will be a liar. You must give in to lies. You must lie about someone's opinion. You must lie about what they are doing to get along with them. And what I'm saying is here in this culture, this is being taught, you know, from little on up. This isn't like you or I might think we come to a place and say, okay, we, we change our words and it might be not entirely true, but we think we're doing it to get along with somebody momentarily. And we know, we know that we've lied. You know, it's a little white lie, we would say. It's something being done for the good. But here they wouldn't think of it that way because they're being taught to get along with people so much. That takes priority over all else. And this leads into lies and it leads into many lies. It gets to be after a while. If you've been taught, taught this from the time you were small on up, you just automatically say what you think the other person wants to hear. And that's all very good up front, but it's not good for it's not good for the Christian. The Christian must tell the truth. Of course, first and foremost, we must tell them the truth about salvation, which is that all men are sinners, including the person you know we're talking to, and that they need to repent of their sins. And Jesus died shedding his blood for their sins. This is again, this is uh, I've said it before. This is the real problem with why people don't flock to Christ because they don't think they're bad people. And yet God has concluded that we are all under sin and we all need a savior. And so here it is, we're trying to tell them the truth, you say. And uh, that is one of the first ways, but this plays out in all areas of life. We want to convey the right message. When I do these, when I do these videos, I'm always challenged for the title. I don't know how well I did at the very beginning, but it's like, you know, I don't want a title. I mean, I want titles that are catchy, you know, and I could be pretty creative, but, you know, by God's grace. But the thing is, I want people to know what they're getting. I don't want it to be clickbait. Somebody clicks on and they really don't, they don't want anything to do with something spiritual. Uh, as much as I would like to talk to them, it's deceitful to try to get numbers so that somebody will just click on, on your site. And then also when, when I am presenting whatever subject it is, I like to get to that quickly. I like to say it quickly rather than so many of these. They just put it off till the end. You know, you have a 10, 15, 20 minute video and what, what the clickbait was, you're not getting to until the last, you know, three minutes. I think that's very deceitful also. I think you're trying to manipulate people and, and I don't want to do that. I don't think God wants me to do that. And uh, so, so it's just in every facet of life, this is what a Christian ought to be doing. And so, you know, I have another example of a time. Uh, I'm fighting a fly. Please forgive me. I have an example of one time I had a run in with a, a store manager that I worked for. We were working overnight in a grocery store and I was playing uh, a boom box. I had a radio for myself and the crew to listen to. Now, the store manager, the number one store manager was on vacation but he had said that I could. And so he was gone for a while. And as a matter of fact, we both knew that the person who owned the store, who owned a number of stores, really didn't want this to happen, didn't want the radio played. But the store manager was allowing it for the time. So the second in command comes along and he tells me that uh, the head of all these stores got a complaint about the stereo. And he's talking to me about it. You know, he talked a little bit and I explained, you know, I didn't bring the, the store manager's name into it. I didn't want to implicate him, but just saying why we did it, how we tried to keep it low and this and that and the other thing. And he's just nodding. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I understand. No, that's and everything. In all of those things, he never told me to stop playing it. He never did. And so I kept playing it, thinking this was just a complaint we had to field. And then a week later, the same person complains again. And now he's coming to me and I'm getting written up and disciplined for this. And this meek, mild mannered manager that I had known for several years, he was such a, a timid seeming guy. 
He was cursing me up and down. He was using the Lord's name in vain. He was standing there. When, when you get written up, I mean, it says what it's for. You get to write your own side of the story. And I was just saying, I mean, I had to say, he never told me to stop. He never told me to stop playing it or I would have. And uh, he didn't like that. But the thing is, he didn't convey the message. And as Christians, we need to convey the message. And by the way, I'm not justifying myself. That was over 30 years ago. I'm not justifying what I did. I'm just saying we need to convey the message or there's going to be a lot of frustration. And we are the conveyors of truth. Where are they going to go for truth if they can't, if, can't get it from Christians? We have to tell them and convey the message. Let's clear away all doubting. We can do nothing against the truth, but we are for the truth. When you see things like in Romans 12, 18, it says, As much as lieth with you, live peaceably with all men, as much as lieth with you. Now, that is not an implication to say that you ignore the rest of Scripture, that you tell little white lies and ignore all that Scripture has said about this, or that you compromise in other ways. No, it means that as much as you can, according to what the Bible allows and instructs, live peaceably with all men. We are going to run into contentions. There are contentions in the church. We are told to reprove, to rebuke. That's what we're told to do, brethren. We are told to put away heretics after the first or second admonition. We are told to drive the wicked from the church. When are we doing that? You see, this is the truth, and truth is going to lead to contention. It has always led Christians to contention. This is, uh, I believe it's 2 Timothy 3.12. Yea, all who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And the whole Bible is built around the premise that these people were, you know, Paul, Peter, Jesus, all of them, they're all running into contention, and they warn that we are going to run into contention here in these last days. So don't fool yourself into thinking we're just going to get along with everyone. Sure, we want to try, but we have to tell the truth. We have to draw the line and say, I have to do this, whether they like it or not, whether they're my friend or not, because Jesus is my Savior, and I love him more than anything else. So I've read this from Romans, and so now you can also think about things like Ephesians 4.15. This says to speak the truth in love. I think I have this mark to turn to quickly, or maybe I closed up the scripture. I think that was more likely. It says, but speaking the truth in love, that we may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Okay, so we speak the truth in love, you say. Well, what is that love? What is that love? Will it always feel good? Will it always sound good? The answer is no. If you go to John 7, 7, Jesus said that the world hated him because he testified of it that its works were evil. He rebuked those places where most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. Now, I want to ask you, did he do this in love? Did Jesus do this in love? And of course, we would say yes. He wants them to repent. He wants them to come to him. Absolutely. Absolutely wants them to come to him. So what is love? Love is not lying to them. Love is not misleading them. We must tell the truth. And I'm just saying it's awfully easy to try to get along with somebody. And before you know it, you're slipping into a lie or something misleading, something that's not entirely true, you see. Very easy to do. And that's what I say, you know, like when I'm doing the videos, I think it's a great example. And that is I'm not trying to lie, but I don't want to mislead them either. And so we have to really be uh, taking a stand for the truth. John 4, 23 and 24, Jesus is saying clearly that God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. My brethren, please seek the Lord in prayer and strive to the uttermost by the grace he gives you to always serve the Lord in truth. May God bless.